welcome. Welcome to tales that go bump in the day or the night, depending on when you choose to listen. Stories to help us celebrate Halloween or All Souls Eve, when it's said that the veils between the worlds, the living and the dead, are at their thinnest. I'm Noel the Storyteller, and over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to share a few stories, songs and chants with you. There'll be parts when you and your grown-ups can join in with me to sing or chant along as I introduce you to all kinds of strange and magical creatures. Don't worry, I'll bring you back safe and sound at the end. But before we start, before we start a poem, so you know you don't really need to be too scared. Things go bump in the night, should not really give you a fright. It's just the hole in your ear that lets in the fear, that and the absence of light. And so, and so to our first chant, our first chant, which is all about an old lady, an old lady who gets an unwanted or an unexpected visitor. Now, this old lady here has a spinning wheel. And on that spinning wheel, she would have made thread. And from the thread, she would have made clothes. And this old lady, well, she lived on her own in a little cottage. And one night, somebody came calling. And there's a part in this chant where you can join in with me, where it goes, and still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company. Are you ready? There was an old woman who lived on her own, and all alone was she, and no one around for miles and miles to keep her company. One night she sat beside the fire, a spinning at her wheel, and as she sat she said, said she, how lonely I do feel. But still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company, and still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company. set themselves down in front of the fire, but still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company. Then in came a wee skinny pair of legs, and they settled themselves down on top of the feet, but still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company. Then in came a great big muscly body, and it settled itself down on top of the legs, but still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company. But then in came a wee skinny pair of arms, and they settled themselves down on the body, but still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company. settled themselves down on the wee skinny arms, but still she sat and still she span and still she wished for company. But then in came a scrawny neck, and it set itself down on top of the body, but still she sat and still she span and still she wished for company. Then in rolled a great big horrible egg and it set itself down on top of the neck but still she sat and still she span and still she wished for company and then she looked up at the unexpected visitor and she said but why have you got such great big feet from walking far from walking far but why have you got such wee skinny legs staying up late and little food. But why, but why have you got such a great big muscly body? For work, walking, working hard, for working hard. But why, but why have you got such wee skinny arms? For staying up late and little food. But why, why have you got such great big hands? 
from working hard, from working hard. But why, but why have you got such a wee skinny neck? From staying up late and little food. And, 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 and why have you got such a great big head? From knowing so much, from knowing so much. And why? Why have you come here? For you! But up she jumped and grabbed a broom and swept it out the door. And still she, still she span, and still she span, and still she wished for company. And still she sat, and still she span, and still she wished for company. Do you think you would have been as brave as that old woman? Would you have been able to get something to shush out the door? Well, I, I hope so. I hope so. Well, our next story, our next story is also about a scary creature. This time the scary creature is an ogre. So if you've ever seen the movies with Shrek in, it's that kind of a creature. But unlike Shrek, this is a really, really wicked ogre. And in the story, a little girl has to be very brave and her mother has to be very crafty. And once again, there's a part where you can join in with me and sing along. And it goes like this. I'm my mother's only daughter. Now she's all alone, all alone, all alone. She sent me out to fetch her the water. Now I can't go home, can't go home, can't go home. So do join in when you hear that song. Once, once upon a time, far, far away, in Spain, in a part of Spain called Andalusia, up in the mountains, away from those lovely golden sands that some of us like to visit, there lived a mother and her daughter. Now, they were quite poor and they lived in a humble cottage up in the mountains. Now, each and every day, the little girl would have to go down to the marketplace because they had no running water in the house. And so she would follow a path down the hillside and she'd go to the fountain and there she'd fetch water. Now there was one thing that the little girl had that was more precious to her than anything else. And that was a beautiful coral necklace, a beautiful coral necklace that she wore around her neck. It was a necklace that had been given to her by a grandmother. And sadly her grandmother was no longer alive. And so she took great care of it. And whenever she went down to the fountain to fetch water from the great trough of water and carry it back up the path to her mother, she would set that necklace down carefully so that it wouldn't get lost. Well, one sunny day she walked all the way down the hillside until she came to the fountain. And she just set down a necklace, went she had a sense that somebody was watching her. It was quiet there in the marketplace that day, but there was a shadowy figure, somebody lurking in the background, but she didn't really pay it much heed because she wanted to do the water fetching. And so she just finished filling up the water container and was about to go back up the path to her mother when she saw what it was that was lurking in the shadows. And it was a horrible looking ogre. It was squat and hairy, had sharp teeth. And it said, I've got something of yours. And in its hand was that beautiful pink coral necklace that the little girl loved so much. And it said, come, come and get it. But she was frightened. She was frightened and instead she hurried away. And she was halfway back up the hillside when she realised she'd have to go back. Well, she really loved that necklace and she didn't want to lose it. And so she took a few deep breaths and she walked back down the path. And she found the ogre still there. And he said, hello, my pretty, come, come, come and take it. 
she approached the ogre and she reached out and she just put her fingers onto that coral necklace when he lifted her up. He lifted her up with his strong arm and he bundled her into the sack and he tied up the sack and then he said, Now you're going to sing for my supper. And he picked up that sack and then he went from house to house. And at each and every house, he would shake the sack and say, Sing, sack, sing, sack, sing us a song or I'll give you a smack. And before he'd said that, he'd knocked on the door and he'd say, I've got a magical sack, a magical sack that can sing. I want you, I want you to give me some money or something to eat and drink. Will you do that? Oh, um, a singing sack, we've never heard such a thing. Uh, very well, very well. And so he shook the sack. And the little girl who was bundled inside it began to sing. I'm my mother's only daughter. Now I'm all alone, all alone, all alone. She sent me out to fetch her the water. Now I can't go home, can't go home can't go home. And it was such a sad and lovely song. And the girl had such a pretty voice that, well, everybody was astounded that the sack could sing. And so they gave the ogre some money. And then he picked up the sack and he went off to another house. And it was the same in each and every place. He would shake that sack and he'd say, sing sack, sing sack, sing us a song or I'll give you a smack. All day long he did it. By the end of the day, the girl's voice was really tired, and she was tired from being bundled up in the sack. But the ogre was greedy. He was greedy, and he wanted more. And there was just one little cottage he hadn't visited yet in that little village. And it was a cottage that was up on the hillside. And so he carried the sack up the path until he came to the cottage, and then he, he knocked on the door. When the door was open, there was a woman, a woman maybe in her thirties or forties, and, and she looked concerned, she looked worried. Not that the ogre cared. And he said, I've got a singing sack. If my sack sings for you, will you give me some money or something to eat or drink? And she said, uh, very well, y yes, I'll listen. And then once again he said, singing sack, singing sack. Sing the song or I'll give you a smack. And once again the girl began to sing. I'm my mother's only daughter. Now she's all alone, all alone, all alone. She sent me out to fetch her the water. Now I can't go home, can't go home, can't go home. And of course, that woman, who was the little girl's mother, recognised the voice. But there in front of her, was a big, ugly, and powerful ogre. And she knew she'd have to be clever, she'd have to be crafty to trick it. And so she said, oh, you're clever to have a sack that can sing? Well, that really is a magical thing. My, my, you are very, very talented, very skillful to do that. Hmm, uh, it must be thirsty work going from place to place. Um, uh, getting the sack to sing for folk. Come, come, you just wait there and I'll bring you a delicious glass of my very, very best wine. And so she went inside and she got the bottle of wine and she poured it out into a glass and she took it to the ogre and the ogre went <coughs> He gulped it down. And then she said, did you enjoy that? Oh yes, very good, very good. You best have another one. And so she fetched him another one. She fetched him two and three and eventually he grew sleepier and sleepier and tired and tired until eventually he slumped down onto the floor. And as he snored away, the mother, she went back inside and she got a knife and she cut the rope from around the sack and she pulled out her daughter and how the two embraced and there were tears of joy as the mother set her daughter free. And then the mother knew what she had to do next. 
Uh, it just so happens that she was a kindly woman, even though the two of them didn't have very much, and she'd been feeding a stray dog and a stray cat. And the two of them, they were in the backyard. And so the mother, she went, she carefully picked up the cat, and she picked up the dog. It was just as well they were friends. And then she bundled them into the sack, and she tied up the sack. And then, and then, mother and daughter bolted and barred the door. When the ogre woke up, he had a terrible throbbing headache. And his only thought was to go somewhere new and to get the sack to sing so he could get something to eat. And so he lifted up the sack, which was now somewhat lighter, and he walked down the pathway and he went to another house he hadn't yet visited on the very, very edge of the village. And he knocked on the door. And this time, a man came to the door. And the man, he looked the ogre up and down. And he said, yes. And the ogre said, I've got a sack. A sack that can sing. If it sings sweetly for you, will you give me something good to eat? Mm, very well. And then the ogre said, sing me sack. Sing me sack. Sing me a song or I'll give you a smack. And he shook it. But what? came out of the sack this time wasn't the beautiful voice of a sweet girl, but <coughs> and now the ogre was angry. He was angry because he thought the little girl was trying to make fun of him. And the man on the doorstep, he started to laugh at the ogre and said, give you food for that, pay you for that, be off with you. And the ogre picked up the sack and now he was full of the wildest temper took that sack and he walked out onto the hillside and then I'm gonna give you a smack he said to the sack and he opened up the sack and out of the sack jumped the dog <laughs> and it began to nip at his heels and the cat jumped out and scratched his leg <laughs> and the ogre he ran he ran as fast as he could far far away I do believe he was never ever seen Again. But the little girl and her mother, they lived happily ever after. You know, it's good when we've got mums and dads that can take care of us. Mums and dads who are clever and crafty, just like the mum in that story. Now, I've got another little chant for you now, and perhaps you'd like to join in with me. Are you ready? I'm going to come in a little bit closer. Now listen carefully to me. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Here's a really ghostly story. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. There was an old man or skin and bone. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Lived in a little house all alone. Hoo, 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 hoo. Ha, 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 late one night when all was still. Hoo, 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 ha, ha, ha. He went to the churchyard on the hill. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. He heard a ghostly sort of moan. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. He looked around but he was alone. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. He creeped open the church door. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. He'd never been in there before. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. He saw a coffin long and thin. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Opened the lid and peeked right in. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Out jumped a ghosty dressed in white. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Gave the old man a terrible fright. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Old man to the ghost did say, Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Will I look like you one day? Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. Ghosty gave a ghostly laugh. Hoo, 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 ha, 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 ha. You'll see one day soon enough. Hoo, 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 ha, ha, ha. Old man to the ghost did say, Hoo, 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 hoo. Ha, 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 ha. When and where will that day be? 
story about a magical creature. A magical creature that sailors say that they have seen as they've travelled in their ships across the seven seas. And it's a beautiful creature. A beautiful creature that you might see out on the rocks or swimming in the shimmering seas. Now, lots of the stories of this creature come from Scotland. And in Scotland they say, no, it's not one of those. It will have been seals that you've seen. Can you guess which creature I'm talking about? It's a beautiful creature with long, long flowing hair. A beautiful creature that has a tail which shimmers in the light. If you guess, do you know? Yes, this final story is a story all about mermaid. Once, once long, long ago, on a tiny Scottish island, a tiny Scottish island by the name of the Isle of Egg, there lived a fisherman. And the fisherman, he lived in a little cottage on the hillside, and it overlooked a bay, a sandy bay where he kept his boat. Now each and every day he'd go out in his boat and he'd cast his net into the sea and some days he wouldn't catch many fish but other days he'd get a great shoal of fish and he'd take those fish in the nets and he'd throw to shore and then he'd take them in baskets to the nearby village and there he'd sell the fish. One day, one autumn day, there was a bright sun shining down and he went out into the bay and he took his boat and he rowed out until he was there in the ocean and he cast his net. And on this particular day, he thought he'd got a particularly big catch. The net was really full and he hauled in that net. He hauled in the net. But as he was hauling it in, he saw that he hadn't caught fish, but a beautiful, beautiful mermaid. Well, the moment he set his eyes on the mermaid, he felt he'd fallen in love, but she looked up and she said, please, please set me free, I don't belong in your world, but now he'd seen her, he'd seen her beauty, and he couldn't help himself, and so he hauled the mermaid into the boat, and he rowed shore, and when he'd grounded the boat there in the bay, he realised it was possible, it was possible once he carried the mermaid up the path to his cottage, he realised it was possible to take away her slough, to take away her mermaid's tail. And beneath that tail, there were a pair of lily white legs. And at first, well, it took her time to learn how to walk on the land, because she didn't have her land legs yet. Well, the fisherman, he hid her slough away. He hid it away in one of the darkest corners of his barn. Well, over time, the mermaid began to accept her life. She began to accept her life as the wife of the fisherman. And a year passed and she gave birth to a baby boy. And he grew up hale and hearty with red cheeks just like his father. And another year passed and she gave birth to a second child. And a third year passed gave birth to a third child. But the mermaid, the mermaid, she always longed to be back in the sea once more. And she'd go out, she'd go out to where she could cut bracken, because in those days they couldn't grow hay in which to fill up mattresses on which you might sleep, or to feed the animals. And what they'd get to fill up their mattresses was they'd get something called bracken, which grows on the hillside and in woods. And as she was cutting the bracken, 
She'd look out over the sea and she'd long to be there once again, long to be there amongst her people in the cool, clear waters. And she'd begin to sing. And perhaps you can join in with me once you know how it goes. I'm so weary all alone, pulling bracken, pulling bracken. I'm so weary all alone, pulling bracken early. Pulling bracken, pulling bracken, pulling bracken early. Well, she'd often look out over the sea and sing her sad song, but as her children got older, they didn't really seem to notice that she was sad. And neither did her husband, he was so busy with his life. But, but one day, one day, he'd caught a good catch. And he'd taken the catch into the village to sell the fish. And the boys, who are now seven, eight, and nine, they were playing. And they were playing one of the games they love to play, a game of hide and seek. And the youngest one, the youngest one, well, he always found it difficult to find somewhere to hide, which his brothers couldn't uncover. And so he looked for a place which was really small and cramped, where only he could fit. Now, he knew the surroundings very well. He tried hiding out on the moors amongst the rocks. But there was one place, there was one place in his father's old barn where there was a tiny little cubby hole, which he thought only he would fit in. And so that day, he went and hid there. And he hid inside, and he listened as his brothers came looking for him. And they searched, and they searched, and they searched. And eventually, they shouted out, We give up! We don't know where you are! Come out! Come out! Come out! But he didn't want them to see him just yet, so he waited until he heard them go away. And then... Then, he realised that in that tiny little crevice, that tiny little cubby hole, there was something really soft, something very, very soft. And because it was dark, he couldn't really see what it is. And so he, he pulled it out and he carried it until he was nearer to the door of the barn. And then he held it up and he saw it was really beautiful. It had all of the colours of the ocean in it. Greens and blues and turquoises. And he thought, my mother would love this. My mother loves the ocean. Often she, she, she goes out on the hillside and she looks out to sea. She'll love this. She'll love the colours in it. And so he went running into the house and he said, mother, mother, look what I found. Isn't it beautiful? And his mother looked at him. And then she went towards him and she embraced him. And then a tear trickled down her face. And she took that beautiful thing because that beautiful thing was her tail the tail that her husband had hidden away all those years ago and she looked at her son and she mouthed and then she ran she ran down the pathway and onto that sandy beach and she lay down on the sandy beach and she pulled on her mermaid's tail and then she shuffled across the ground and then she swum. She swum out into the cool, clear waters. Out and out she swam. And now there she was back amongst her people and they came to greet her. A few hours later, the fisherman came home and immediately he knew something was wrong. He listened to his son and his son explained about what he'd found and then how his mother had run off down onto the beach and the fisherman, well, he was desperate to find his wife. And so he went out onto the cliff and he looked out of the water and he said, Darling wife, darling wife, where are you? Darling wife, where are you? But he couldn't see her. And so he ran down the path and into the bay and he looked out once more. And it was then he heard singing. I was weary all alone, pulling back and pulling back. And I was weary all alone, pulling black and early. Now I'm free and in the sea, swimming freely with my people. Now I'm free and in the sea, swimming, swimming freely. And he could see her, he could see her there, because she was out on the rocks some distance away, 
and he went to the water and he peered at her and then she beckoned to him. She beckoned to him and he began to wade into the water and it, oh, it was so cold. But he continued wading in deeper and deeper and soon it was slushing around his waist and then the cold water crept over his chest and he began to swim out. He began to swim out and she jumped off the rocks and she began to swim towards him and eventually the two of them embraced one another and he disappeared beneath the waves. But don't worry, don't worry. Though neither the mermaid nor the fisherman were seen ever again on land, the three boys, well, they had grandparents there on the Isle of Egg and the grandparents, they took good care of them. And the three boys grew up healthy and whole. And in time, they married and they had children and their children had children. And so, if you go to the Isle of Egg and you see people walking and you notice that they have a sway in their hips when they walk, as if, as if they belong in the ocean, you will have found the grandsons and granddaughters the great-grandsons and the great-granddaughters of the fisherman and his wife. And before I say goodbye, one final little song for you to join in with. Because at Halloween, we might see all manner of strange creatures. So definitely there might be trolls and goblins. There might be vampires. There might be ghosts and, and witches and wizards. And perhaps when it comes to celebrating Halloween, you might carve a pumpkin like that and you might dress up. And so here's a final little song, a little song that you might just like to sing along with me and which you might share. It goes like this. Ghosts on posts are sitting with faces pale and terrible. They howl and scowl, frightening for the dogs and the babies. Can you try it with me? Ghosts on posts are sitting with faces pale and terrible. They howl and scowl, frightening all the dogs and the babies. I've been Noel the Storyteller. I hope you've enjoyed my Halloween stories, songs and chants. And I wish you a really fantastic half term. Take care. And if you've enjoyed the stories and the songs and you'd like to leave a comment here underneath, that would be great. My blessings to you.